The type one is known as the perfectionist and also the improver. The type five is known as the observer, the investigator, and sometimes too, the innovator. So both of these types have a desire to make things better. They also both have a desire to be competent and to stay um, in control, mainly with their emotions and reactions. They're both, along with the type three, in the competency grouping, where in the face of a challenge or in a moment of conflict, rather than getting really emotional, whether angry, sad, worry, or trying to look on the bright side, they go into calm, cool, collect, rational, let's solve this like sensible, mature adults, let's look at the data, don't give me the drama kind of energy. So there are a lot of similarities between these two. There's also some key differences and that's what we're going to look at today. So right off the bat, the thing that makes a one a one and a five a five is that key motivator, that core motivator. And for the type one, they are really striving to be perfect. Hence the name, the perfectionist. It's there for a reason. They're also striving to be good and right and correct and practical and proper. And they are really focused on the rules and doing the right thing. And how they determine the right thing is usually based on their own rules and determination, but we'll talk about that in just a little bit. And the type five is striving to be self-sufficient and capable, competent, knowledgeable, and formed, and sometimes even a little detached. And again, this will come back to play later. Sometimes people think that they're distant, but they are just really excellent at managing their energy levels. And so they know when they need to detach from the group, a person, emotional situation in order to be able to sustain their energy um, and they're very aware of it so we'll, we'll talk more about that in just a minute um, so if that is still not clear oh and I should say too fives are very focused on problem solving and innovative ideas and gathering data and um, that will play into some of these key differences as well in just a few minutes. So um, if that is still unclear, if you're still kind of struggling, am I a one? Am I a five? You know, I, I am into data. I'm into logic. I can be rational. I just, I don't know. We're going to get into some other differentiating factors that hopefully will provide you some, with some more clues and additional clarity clarity by the end of this as to which one is your dominant type. So one thing to look at is we're going to look at their um, energy levels and their relationship with boundaries. So the type one is very much, um, hard work is very much a foundation a foundational part of, of who they are. They wear kind of hard work, overwork as a badge of honor. They also feel really responsible for the group, for the project. So when somebody's not pulling their load or not doing it properly or as good as they think they could do it, they'll take on their workload as well. And so they are, you know, very willing to pour over the details to ensure everything is perfect, the project, the presentation, whatever it might be and that it gets executed properly. Whereas a five, on the other hand, their energy gets depleted from work, overworking specifically, from being around a lot of people, too much, too big of a group. And so fives like to do things well too, um, but they're not going to necessarily pour in the amount of energy and time and effort into the work that the type one will do, at least not repeatedly, um, nor will they really have the sense to the sense of responsibility to do so. They don't, they don't take on that responsibility of, oh, I need to do my work and somebody else's because they're not doing it, right? Fives typically won't have that. That's not to say they don't 
ever overwork or, you know, pour their heart and soul into a specific project, absolutely, that will happen on occasion. But as far as a normal way of working, m- more like the type one, that will not be the type five's norm. The other thing to look at is self control versus self containment. So, this is an interesting one. Type ones have a really interesting relationship with anger, they absolutely feel it, especially being in that body center. And they, though, feel like it's wrong. It's improper. It's you're out of control. Um, it's not good to show your anger. So what they'll do is um, they will shove it down, shove it down, shove it down. And it kind of turns into like slow resentment, a lot of frustration, being upset. But they'll try and hold it in. It's kind of like, oh, let's let's zip this up. Let's zip it up, even though it's, you know, coming out at the seams. And they think they have it under control. But people around them typically have a pretty good idea when they're upset and can still read them when they are upset even though they may not you know directly be angry whereas a type five really for two reasons they become they are much harder to read one is because they are masters at self-containment. They have, they don't do a lot of animation with their hands. They don't have a lot of facial expressions. Their their voice tonality isn't going to go up and down a lot. They're going to be pretty steady eddy, pretty kind of cool, calm, and collect regardless of the situation, regardless of how they're feeling. So that paired with the fact that they truly do don't feel their feelings at all. Like they do their best to compartmentalize and their automatic response is to disconnect from any hard feelings. So that does make them really hard to read. Um, Just as a footnote here, threes also have and are in this category too, have a relationship with kind of setting aside emotions. And one of the things that we have talked about in the three versus the five video was that threes being in that heart center, that feeling center will have a sensation, will have a feeling and they will, they will notice it typically, but intentionally put it to the side because it's inefficient right now. It's going to keep them from getting to the goal, but they'll come back to it later. Whereas a five is just so disconnected from their feelings. They won't even realize that they're having that feeling that that's kind of coming up. So a differentiator right there. Um, Another one is this relationship of doing versus thinking. Both types can do both, right? And feel as well, but there's going to be one that comes most natural most of the time. And for the type one, they are in that gut center, that body center, where they are going to have a strong and immediate gut reaction to a situation They will take a moment to kind of maybe process it, to bring in some rationale, to back up so that it's a logical action that they're about to take. And then they're going to move quickly into action. Whereas the type five being in the mental head center, thinking center, um, when something happens, they're they're generally not going to make a quick move. Um, They're going to be much slower compared to that type one. And they usually want to collect all the data, analyze all the information, and then go about determining what their next action is. So it's a very much a slower pace. And then the other thing that is helpful when you're deciding between am I this or that is looking at where your type goes to in stress and sometimes to where they go in growth. So for the type one who is striving to be perfect and right um, in times of stress, after they use all their defense mechanisms and coping strategies, they will make a lateral move into that type four energy who tends to be really focused on themselves. In normal situations and those stereotypical one situations, ones are looking out for the common good. They're willing to sacrifice their own needs for those of the the interests of the group. In that type four energy, they may be a little bit more um, self-centered, which actually could be a great balance. So that's not always, a, you know, a, 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 a something that won't serve them that actually very much could be helpful. Um, the other thing in stress that will show up for them is that they, um, will maybe they're okay being a loner, like the four being okay with being unique, being on, they're not going to jump on the bandwagon. They're very focused on doing what is right. I feel like Captain America is the ultimate type one as I'm thinking about this, um, in his movies, but they, 
they, um, they're okay with that at the same time. Sometimes it's, you know, that's lonely. It gets lonely. You can feel, um, depressed. You can feel like kind of, um, there's something wrong with you. Why didn't you just get along with everybody else? Right? So those are some things that will show up for the four and that can show up for the one in stress as well. Um, on the flip side of that, their growth arrow is bringing in some of that seven energy. A lot of times though, and initially ones will want to neglect that because they see that spontaneity, that enthusiasm, the, the, the willingness to show that much emotion, um, even if it's excited emotion as, oh, getting, uh, as preventing them from executing the plan for making logical, rational decisions. And they almost see it as kind of irresponsible behavior. And then eventually their growth, their work will be to bring in that energy to use it to enhance and strengthen their natural strategies, tendencies, and enhance, not change, not be somebody else, not be like a seven but that will be the work for the type one. And then for the type five, they have an arrow to the type seven as well. So that might be some interesting overlap right there since they both have an arrow to the seven. And then they will also have an arrow to the type eight. Now in stress, they will go to that seven energy. And what that will tend to look like is that fives will get so excited and gleefully, joyfully dive into the details, the nitty gritty research analysts of a project, of a topic of interest to them, that they will almost become manic and scattered and forgetful because they are so just engrossed in this project that they are researching, learning about. And then they also can get so excited about the project, finding the solution that they will forget to connect with others, that they will kind of, again, disconnect from their feelings. Um, So that's how that will kind of show up for the five, bringing in that stress energy. And then for the type five, the, the area for growth is going to be really leaning into their type eight energy, which is striving for power. Initially, you know, pa- being powerful in, in entails being enthusiastic, being passionate, being um, engaged, which is kind of the opposite of what the type five initially wants to do, right? They want to actually disengage from others and just be within themselves their own ideas being in their own head. Um, but that doesn't mean they, they don't want to have influence. They very much can be powerful and influential when they do it their own way, which for a five that might look like, um, maybe influencing from behind the scenes and using strategy and intellect versus maybe charisma or forcefulness like the type eight might tend to do. Uh, so they absolutely have that capability and bringing in that seven, eight energy to their five energy is such a great recipe recipe for bringing the five's ideas to life, you know, doing the work that they want to do, sharing the message that they want to share. So those are just some of the clues. There's definitely some others out there. There's some other things could even be said about what we talked about today, but that will give you an overview and hopefully some questions to start to access yourself, to reflect on, and some additional clues to get you closer into determining your type. So 